Good morning. Good to see you. Uh, we're disappointed that instead of having air passengers' backs and bringing Canada's regulations and air passenger protections up to the level set by the European Union, the Liberals have chosen to double down on an approach that's complex, bureaucratic, and expensive. And as a result, we're not confident that it's going to be a significant improvement and that we're going to see measured progress in terms of protecting air passengers in Canada. In tabling the amendments that they did on Friday, uh, the Liberals have ignored uh, the recommendations of the Standing Committee on Transport. They've ignored the views and the recommendations of Canada's leading uh, consumer advocates on air passenger rights. And they've put us in a position where we're likely uh, to see more air passengers sleeping on airport floors and out thousands of dollars uh, because of the behaviour of Canada's airlines. It's really unclear why the Liberals have ignored the example that has worked so well in Europe for over a decade. Why they have refused to amend the Canadian Transportation Act to remove the loophole that air airlines have been using to deny air passengers the compensation that they're due. Uh, instead, as I said, they've doubled down on a process that hasn't been serving air passengers. We've seen a backlog of over 36,000 complaints before the CTA, long timelines, over a year and a half wait to get passengers' complaints adjudicated. And we're seeing only a very small fraction of air passengers who face delays and cancellations um, who jump through all the hoops, who are able to pursue compensation through this complex bureaucratic process. So again, we're, we're disappointed with what we've seen. We, we felt like uh, we laid out very clearly what was expected in terms of protecting air passengers. My private member's bill, C-237, uh, included a number of amendments that would have brought Canada's approach up to the international standard and really had air passengers' backs. And I think more than anything, this shows the difference in our approaches as parties. The, the Liberals continually have the backs of the big airlines, uh, while we're going to stand with Canadian air passengers, who over the past two years have faced some extraordinarily difficult situations. Um, and it's time that we had their backs as a country. It's time that Canada brought its laws up to the standard that has been set by the European Union. And we're going to continue to fight every day to ensure that that becomes the case. So I'm happy to take any questions from uh, the folks here in the room. On the EU, Al Gabra had said earlier this morning that the strengthened Passenger Bill of Rights would be tougher than the rules in the EU or the US. What do you make of that description? Well, the key thing that's required is closing the loophole that exists in Canadian law that allows airlines to deny compensation for disruptions that are within their control. And he hasn't touched that aspect of the Canadian Transportation Act. So I would ask him, who's validating that position? I just spoke this morning to a, a company that pursues claims on behalf of air passengers and has worked in Europe to do that for years. They've tried to pursue claims on behalf of passengers in Canada and haven't been able to um, because our system is so flawed. They've looked at the proposed changes and they don't feel like it brings it up to the standards set in the European Union. Of course, time will tell. Ultimately, the proof is in the pudding and if passengers receive the compensation that they're due and we see passengers protected, that will show that we're up to that standard. But having looked at the legislation, I'm not confident that that's the case and I'm not hearing that from other uh, organizations. Air Passenger Rights would be another organization that's responding to the Liberals' approach. The uh, new legislation has higher fines for airlines. Do you not see a benefit to that? Well, that is something that we are calling for, and it's good to see that they've increased the fines to a maximum of $250,000. Of course, it, it really relies on the Canadian Transportation Agency to use fines as a tool for ensuring compliance. What we've seen over the past couple of years is that they haven't been us using even the paltry fines that are in the current legislation. So time will tell whether they're uh, willing to stand up to the big airlines and levy fines that are effective as a deterrent. Ultimately, this is about uh, creating better behavior and treating air passengers right. And so far, we haven't seen fines used as an effective tool. Can you give me a sense of the individuals you've spoken with? How many have actually received compensation under the Passenger Bill of Rights in 2019? Do you know that number? So I, I've yet to speak to anyone who's received compensation under the APPR in the past couple of years. As I said, there's a huge backlog. 
uh, and, and talking to this organization this morning that pursues claims on behalf of passengers, they haven't been able to set, successfully see a claim through to compensation either. So the, the current system is deeply flawed. One of the challenges that we're seeing is that there's very little information coming out of the CTA as to um, the, the amount of claims that are, that are being awarded and the financial amounts. Uh, so they claim that 90% of, of the claims that, that come in are settled through facilitation, this informal process, and there's no information publicly made available by either the department or the CTA as to how those claims are actually resolved. So right now it's, it's very unclear whether this process is working at all, even for the very small percentage of passengers that are determined enough to jump through all these bureaucratic hoops. One of the questions that uh, Minister Algabra answered was that what are the exemptions? And the exemptions that he gave right away as an example was a snowstorm. So that covers a lot of complaints that would have come in over the holiday yeah. season. Are, as they're doing this negotiation right now with the airlines as to what the exemptions should be, do you, are you worried that this inclement weather, snowstorm, rainstorm, lightning, whatever, can be broadened in such a way that it can absolve them of, of a lot of responsibility? Well, for sure. We've seen that the airlines have been very successful at gaining huge exemptions and claiming that almost everything is out of their control or required for safety reasons and using that as an excuse to deny passengers the compensation they're due. Now, the European system is much simpler. They have a, a two-category uh, classification of disruptions. Either it's an extraordinary disruption, something entirely outside the influence of the airline, or it's an ordinary disruption, which involves compensation in the case that a delay or a cancellation is beyond a certain amount of time. So we've been pushing for Canada to adopt that simple classification system, and the minister has refused. And so will the NDP be supporting? I guess you, got, you will. You'll be supporting the budget, so you ultimately will be supporting. Well, we're going to have air passengers back, so we're going to keep fighting for them every day. Uh, we're going to work at committee to, to try to strengthen what the Liberals have put forward. But ultimately, this shows the difference between our parties. It shows that the Liberals are going to have the backs of the big airlines, and we're going to continue to fight for, for ordinary Canadians. Okay. In terms of like the passengers who are getting on planes for spring break and, uh, and the summer, yeah. what are you predicting? What will be the situation at airports? What do you think of that will look like? And do you at least think the changes might help them, even if it's not good enough? Well, having looked at, at the legislation the Liberals have put forward, uh, I'm not confident that it's going to make a significant difference for air passengers in this country. Well, there's a long backlog, as you know, at the CPA of complaints, but you haven't told us what steps you would take one by one to reduce that backlog or to eliminate the backlog and prevent it from occurring again. So you want to just list those out for us? Right. So we've been advocating for a simple classification system of disruptions and automatic compensation so that uh, when a flight is delayed or cancelled, and falls into the category of things that should be within the influence of an airline, the passengers who are affected by that incident are automatically compensated by the airline. That would resolve the backlog, and, and we shouldn't be requiring passengers to uh, pursue two different processes. Right now, they have to, first of all, uh, submit a claim to the airline, wait 30 days for the airline's response, and if they're, they're not awarded compensation, which in the vast majority of cases they aren't, they have to pursue a separate uh, claim process through the CTA. That's a ridiculous process. It's not fair to consumers, it's not fair to travelers. And are there things that you feel he has done in this new step, this new bill, that actually bring things forward? Well, as I said, increasing the fines to $250,000 is a positive step. Process of complaints. In terms of the process of complaints, well, one, one thing we'll be watching is the statutory timeline of 60 days for uh, hearing back from the CTA. Right now, the backlog is requiring um, over a year and a half to get back, back to passengers. Uh, so moving forward, we'll be watching that closely. But we're not confident that the way that the Liberals have chosen to address this issue is going to put us in a place where we have world-leading air passenger protections. Sorry, you, would you have liked to have seen any of these changes implemented by the spring, by the summer travel season? I, I would have liked to have seen these changes implemented in 2019 when the Liberals promised world-leading air passenger protections. 
Uh, this is the third time that the Liberals have tried to get this right. Uh, I hope that we're not back here a year from now trying to fix it again, but I, I think that'll probably be the case. And, uh, sorry, do you want to Okay, I'll just follow up really quick then. You know, what obviously some people are going to probably be saying today, well, look at these regulations, more red tape. This is going to increase the price that Canadians have to pay when they book an air, a, a flight. Is that a fear of your party? We're advocating for a simpler, less expensive system uh, for Canadians in terms of the amount that our government will have to pay to administer the system of air passenger protections. The current system is complex, it's bureaucratic, and it's expensive. Uh, when we look at the European model, it's been working for over a decade, and I can't uh, explain why the minister hasn't chosen to emulate that model. He's, re he's trying to reinvent the wheel, and, and it's not necessary. I'm concerned that the cost of flying, plane tickets will go up because of, there's this huge fine now, 250 k Well, the cost of flying is exorbitant already. Um, and, you know, the, the main factor that we rely on to drive down costs is competition. So if there are airlines that respect air passenger rights and deliver the product that people buy, they're going to gain more market share. You mentioned uh, the lack of tracking around the mediation uh, of claims and decisions on complaints. How far does the proposed law go toward increasing uh, tracking and transparency around complaints uh, for both decisions issued by the tribunal and the mediated outcomes um, which don't involve a tribunal ruling? Well, that, that's one of the big concerns we're seeing in the legislation that's been tabled is that the minister has written in what is essentially a gag order. So if you're an air passenger and you go through the claim process and you're unhappy with the way that it's finally resolved, you're not allowed to speak to the public or the media about how it went unless you have the consent of the airline. That's not a fair and transparent process. The other thing I'll mention is that it's very important that Canadians understand how much the airlines are actually paying out in compensation. That's information that we don't currently have, and it's information that we're not going to have under the legislation that's been tabled. My question is about the, the CTA, the, the proposed changes are giving more powers to the CTA. Um, how much do you think this is going to lead to it becoming a little bit of an enforcement agency, essentially? Well, certainly that's uh, the minister's uh, vision for the CTA. The challenge that we've seen in the past with the CTA is that they're far too close to the airlines themselves. And so we have a regulator that is in, in some ways captured by the industry, and, and uh, we've seen that in its decisions over the past number of years. So what we wanted was strong laws, strong legislation that protects air passengers. Instead, what we've seen is the minister hand over even more discretionary power to the CTA, which doesn't, frankly, have a great track record. If this has been an issue since 2019, why are you still voting in support of the Liberals' budget? Well, this has been, a, we're going to fight for air passengers every single day, and we've been doing that since 2019. Uh, we look at the budget holistically. There's a lot of stuff in there we're going to be reviewing and fighting for at committee. Um, you know, as I said earlier, this really shows the contrast between the Liberals and the NDP when it comes to protecting consumer rights. They're a party that's going to stand up for the big corporations. They always have. And we're going to fight for average Canadians. Do you think this bill belongs in the budget? No, I think if uh, the Liberals had some guts, they would have tabled it as standalone legislation. Do you think there will be any benefit of passing the regulatory cost of resolving complaints onto the airlines, as this bill sort of proposes to do? So, so we heard uh, a lot of testimony at the Transport Committee about Canada's air passenger uh, protection regime, and not once did we hear a recommendation that the airlines should be required to pay for the cost of administering the process. So I'm not sure where the minister got that idea. Uh, it will, you know, time will tell how that pans out. But we need to make sure that the, pa the, the system that protects air passengers is independent from the airlines. We don't want the fox guarding the hen house. We need strong rules that are adequately enforced. Can I ask you about a separate topic? We had a transport stakeholder group talking about violence on local transit systems within the country. Uh, is the NDP concerned about the violence that we're seeing in places such as Vancouver and Toronto and other places? And do you see a role perhaps for uh, the federal government, the transport minister, to make sure that you know, your commutes are safe? I, absolutely. I think it's something that has uh, startled all Canadians. It's something that we're concerned about as a party. Uh, people deserve to be safe when they're commuting using public transit. 
And as part of expanding the use of public transit in Canada, safety needs to be one of the, the foremost concerns. What do you think that role is for Ottawa? For Ottawa? Uh, well, I think it's working with uh, the transit authorities, working with provincial partners to ensure that measures are taken to uh, make sure that folks who are commuting using transit uh, have the safety that they deserve. Thank you. We have reporters online, so if you have any questions, please use the raise hand function to notify us of your questions. Uh, si vous avez des questions, vous êtes en ligne, utilisez la fonction levez la main pour nous avertir de votre question. And I have a question. Josh, go ahead. Hi, um, I'm just uh, wondering, um, do you see anything in this in this legislation that would kind of um, hold the CTA accountable in some way if they don't meet the timelines? Because, you know, like it, you could have the shortest timelines in the world for solving something, but, you know, if there's no consequences, if you don't meet it, you know, like that, like what happens if it, you know, if it goes longer than 60 days, you know, if the mediation process goes longer than 60 days, you know, like what, what are, do you see anything in there that kind of addresses that issue? Yeah, it's an excellent question. I, I don't see anything in the legislation that would hold the CTA accountable for its timelines. And certainly, you know, elsewhere in government, we see statutory timelines that aren't respected. So I think it's a good question for the minister. How is he going to hold uh, his own agency accountable for those timelines? Thanks. All right. Thanks very much, everybody.